Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lorelei, and you're watching one of my knitting vlogs on the Handmade by Lorelei channel, YouTube channel. Today is uh, Saturday, July something, <laughs> 15, 16, I don't know. No, it's the 15th. So today's July 15th. And um, I just finished this. So I'm going to give you the lowdown, the good, the bad, and the ugly on that in today's episode. Um, I'm also going to talk about a couple of other things. And it's probably going to be one of those rambly videos because I am home alone and I haven't talked to anybody all day. So uh, if you're up for all that, stick around. If not, I'll see you on the next one. So I've been knitting this bad boy since May and it's taken a long time to finish. And I was really, really excited in the beginning. And then about halfway through, I put it down for a little while and then I picked it back up. As is the case with most of my knitting projects lately, I don't know why. Um, but it is summertime and I'm trying not to be too hard on myself because it's a little hot to be knitting. It's a little bit warm. I usually knit socks all summer, but in this case I saw this and I said, that looks cool. I want to do that. <laughs> so let me grab it. So this is the Goji cowl. That's G. That's G O J I by Olga Jazzy Knits. Her name is um, Olga, and I cannot pronounce her last name. I'm sorry. So if you search for Olga Jazzy Knits, I am sure you will find the Goji. Is goji a fruit? I'm not sure. I tried to do some um, research. I can't seem to get on my Ravelry on my iPad. <laughs> it's telling me my password and shit's wrong. And it's not wrong. So, I don't know, Ravelry. But, anyway. In goji, in the goji description, it says that it's kind of a versatile piece that can be worn in a number of ways. It can be worn as a kerchief, could be worn as a capelet, or as a baklava. Something about it just spoke to me. Now you may be asking yourself, Laura, Lori, Lorelai, why? Would you want to knit something filled with a bunch of holes? How is that going to be warm in the winter? But I am not concerned about that. I just want something that looks cool. And I think if you got a winter coat on and you got this underneath it, it's going to provide enough warmth. In Below zero weather? Probably not. But it rarely gets that cold here, so. Um, so as you can see, there are these little... I She calls them curls. I don't know if that's what I would call them. But it looks like some sort of alien thing. <laughs> And I love it. So, it comes down to a point in the front. And her sample, she uses Mayak, Mayak, whatever it's called. Mayak. So that's super soft, right? In my mind, I didn't want to use something like Superwash or something super soft because I felt like the curls wouldn't stick up enough. So I decided to use um, this is what I have left. I had three of these to begin with. 
This is Wool Dreamers Moda. And it's their um, Manchega wool from Spain. And I got this at Woolen Folk last October at Rhinebeck. And I fell in love with this color. This feels soft to the touch, but has a nice structure to it. It's not applied yarn. It, well, it might be. Yeah, it looks like it's two ply. But I figured it would have enough structure. So this is what I decided to use. And I'm, I'm happy I used it. It actually, um, it's not too different than how it felt when I was knitting it. It is blocked. I washed and blocked it. I washed and blocked it before I seamed it. That's the, as per the instructions. So it is knit flat and then it's seamed on the back here with a Kitchener stitch, which I didn't really do very well, but I'm just not good at it. So, um, I only broke into this third skein to do the I-cord bind off. <laughs> so I didn't use that much of this third in case you were thinking about making one. So, like I said, when you start off, you start off at the widest width. And then just gradually you're decreasing all the way through it. So that at the end, you end up ending at this edge. So then you're only doing two of the curls on, a, on the rows. So it decreases quite a bit. It is a weird shape, I have to say. It is not symmetrical in any way. And I kind of feel like the shape, maybe the shape just ended up having to be this way because of the pattern. But, um, I don't know, it's a little weird. What is this? God. Like I said, it's extremely hot here, so I have to put all this up here. So, um, I finished it, and it's done, and I'm glad it's done because it felt like it was really going on forever. So, my edges are a little bit tight, I will say that, um... Just the nature of it, I think. You know, you're working the I-cord bind off as you're knitting it, so that's probably why that was the way, that way. But see, it's, it's nice. I mean, it sits well. And the color's really great. And the texture of it is really nice. And it's a very nice wool. So, if you have a chance to use Moda, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Um, would I do anything different next time I, if I did it again? No. I'd probably just do it exactly like I did it, which I didn't make any changes to the pattern. I followed it exactly. Her instructions were excellent, as are all of her patterns. I've knit at least two others. And I just really love the organic kind of funky. It's like an art piece. That's how I look at this. So if that interests you, I recommend this pattern to give it a try, you know? Um, I can't remember offhand how many yards I, you need, but you can look it up on Ravelry and um, if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments. Um, I would love to talk more about it. I just don't really know what else to say. So if you have questions, please go ahead and ask me. 
Um, so that is my finished object for the summer. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to knit next, but I do have to start thinking about that Rhinebeck sweater. I don't know. I just... Sweaters are tough for me. It's hard because I don't want to do any of the math. I want somebody else to just give it to me. I want to knit this size, just tell me what I have to do. I don't want to have to figure out math and I certainly don't want to swatch for anything. I just want to use the yarn that is suggested or the weight at least and go from there. Just run with it. And the, the whole idea of having to like figure it out and do the swatch and then figure out the gauge and all that it just turns me off of sweater knitting which is why I don't do a lot of sweaters but I do have yarn to do a Rhinebeck sweater so um, when Milan comes to visit hopefully soon I'll make her do my math <laughs> alright I'll make her help me with the math or I'll just make her do it. <laughs> so, um, it's done. Uh, am I knitting anything else at the moment? No, uh, just other things you've seen a long time ago. There is some socks I think I'm gonna rip out because I'm not happy with the gauge because I'm knitting them on a zero and I'm not digging it. So I'm gonna probably do that, rip those out. Probably cast on a new pair of socks because I'm kind of feeling socks right now. I need like that simple, mindless filler, and socks are a good thing. Probably do ankle socks or you know, shorties. So I'm sorry I don't have any works, works in progress to show you just because I only work on one project at a time now. So, if that's not your, sh if that's not cool, you don't want to come back and see the one thing that I'm knitting <laughs> each month. I don't blame you. You know, there are much, much, much better knitting podcasts out there. Uh, one of which I want to just plug here because I've been watching it and it's wonderful. It's a Sarah podcast. Sarah is from the Netherlands and she makes amazing things and she's freaking adorable so go watch her podcast <laughs> but I'm going to talk about a couple of other things that aren't really knitting related so if you're not into that bye um well this is knitting related this this two things are knitting related first of all I want to show you the bag that I got recently from my friend Jane of the Rose and Wren Rose and the Wren. She and I did a little bag swap and I did a foundation paper pieced bag for her that has a bird on it. You may have seen it on her Instagram. And she made me this monstrous awesomeness with leather handles and a drawstring. Pockets inside, it's amazing. This is what I used for my goji and all knitting projects going forward because I adore every bit of it. Look at these birds. They're appliqued on there. And look at all this piecing she did. It's wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? Go follow her right now. So I wanted to show you that recently my friend Sydney and I went uh, to lunch in Syracuse and we went to a yarn store that's now in, I think it's considered to be Liverpool. And it's called Nitty Gritty Yarns. I didn't buy any yarn that day. However, I did buy this thing. This is Coco Knits. Let me show you properly. This is what I held my pattern in. 
it's got a little a little a little folder thing here well, what would you call that slot it's got a slot here that will fit my iPad and it's got a slit here that will fit a mini iPad if you had a mini or a phone and then in the middle you can see it's like a traveler's notebook and that it has these elastic bands in the center where you could put extra things now what the girl told me at Nitty Gritty is that it will work well with the other things like for example I can't remember what this is called, but um, this is the one with the magnetic board. You know this thing? How does this work like this? So it works like this, and you put your pattern here. So she's like, yeah, you can use this with this, and look, you can. It's like small, it's smaller. And I can put the elastic on it. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here. But see, I've slipped it in the middle here. That's handy. So the other thing I would like to do is come up with some way to keep my pattern in here using these. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. We were trying to talk a little bit about it in the store, about how I would utilize the bands. And I would like my patterns to be maybe in a plastic sleeve, just for protection. But I kind of wish it was like a traveler's notebook where it was doubled with a fold in the middle and then a slot you can have one page on one side and another page on another side and I just slip them in here but I haven't gone to Staples to see if they have anything I'll have to go there and see and maybe they have something that's like that there or something that I could jerry-rig to get it to do that but so this is a new acquisition. Just wanted to show that in case you were wondering how. And I would love to know how do you keep your patterns because wadded up in project bag isn't working for me anymore. I need it to be nice and neat and kept in a nice place. And this is good for traveling as well. So this is what I used for my pattern when I went on vacation recently. So that's that. Um, if you're looking for a project bag, I have a couple in my store, in case you were wondering, I do do some sewing. And uh, I wanted to show them off here because they're so cute. So this one is the first, and it's got this little hippo fabric, which is by Tula Pink. This is a beautiful Kaufman chambray type of fabric it's got a nice smooth zipper on the top and i've put a white background a white interior and it's got a pocket here these are on my website lorelaiurdo.com in the bags category it's big too it's a really good size and then this is one of the recent tool bags that I made. And this makes a great project bag as well. So it's got a black bottom with this grid. And I just love this fabric. Isn't it amazing? Love it. Natural canvas, leather handles. And this has pockets all the way around. One here, one here, two here, one here, one here, one here, and two here. 
So there's nine, nine pockets. And uh, it will include my signature tag. These were made by Cabin Design Co. out of Ottawa, Canada. So check out Nancy's shop because she's amazing. And she made these for me. They're like etched wood. Laser, laser etched. Project bag. In case you're in the market. You know, I don't know. I just thought I'd do a shameless plug here since it's my podcast. Final thing I want to talk about is the book I'm reading. This is The Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura. I would say this is YA. It's... The main characters are young adults. Uh, they're in junior high, which is kind of my favorite. I love to read about junior high. I don't know why, but um, they are in Japan, and they all, um, the main character stops going to school because of bullying, and she discovers a portal in the mirror in her bedroom and ends up in a castle. And that's all I'm gonna tell you. So go read it, cause it's really good. I'm halfway through it and love it. I love it. It's like a warm hug. It's like the best. It's like, uh, the subject matter is not hard to read. The um, I believe it may have been um, translated, but maybe not. Mizuki Sujimura is a well-known author of best-selling mystery novels in Japan. Her groundbreaking novel, Lonely Castle in the Mirror, combines elements of Japanese fantasy with highly topical themes of emotional well-being and friendship. It won the coveted Japan Booksellers Award, voted by booksellers as the book they most like to sell and became an instant number one bestseller in Japan, selling over half a million copies. It's easy reading. It's enjoyable. I haven't even made it all the way through, and I recommend it. So if you need something to read, Lonely Castle in the Mirror. Here's the back. And I just love the cover. I found out about this book through Allison Pages, which is one of my favorite booktubers to watch. So check her out too if you don't know about her. She's adorable. She lives in Belgium with her husband, but she's American. And she reads a lot, a lot, a lot. And this is one of her favorite books. So that's why I picked it up. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe and stuff. I haven't been putting out very many videos. I'm going to try to do a pen video in the next couple of days. So watch out for that. If you're into fountain pens, if you're not, then skip that one and wait till the next knitting one, which I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be a while. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.